So like I mentioned in there, do or don't, one of the great things about the guard is how despite being regular people in a setting of superhumans or super elves or super bugs and what have you, they still pull out victories regularly and make sure everyone knows you just got beat by a bunch of nobodies, which is something that makes them uniquely appealing, but at the same time, sometimes you want to be at the other end of that spectrum. Sometimes you want to be the super soldiers to end all super soldiers. Instead of being an endless swarm of humanity backed by enough basic equipment to drown the Sahara Desert in tanks, maybe you want to be part of a very finite group of people who are all so disgustingly overpowered they make go who look like he needs to hit the gym more often. And between hitting 30k and approaching 40k subscribers, I figured it'd be fitting to talk about the fellows who embody 40k potentially more than anyone. Incredibly over-the-top supermen fighting the name of a dead god in a nightmarish dictatorship, all the while wearing a tractor's worth of metal. Super soldiers that face the unrelenting horrors of the galaxy with no more than a shrug and an eye roll because they're so far above it all, it's like comparing Mount Everest to a sledding hill. So if you like being the best of the best of the best of the best, being part of a chosen few most people can't even dream of being a part of, and ring armor so god even the elder would tell him to take it down a few notches, and look no further than the Adeptus Custodes. Oh, and the Sisters of Silence, they're included too. You didn't think I'd forget about the Banana Girls in the Banana Boy video, did you? But first, a word from our sponsor. You know them, you've seen them, but for the first time on my channel, I would like to announce that this video is sponsored by none other than Raid Shadow Legends. Are you ever sitting on your phone thinking to yourself, gee, this sure is a phone. I do this quite frequently. But have you ever thought to yourself, gee, I wish this phone could play an RPG with more characters than Pancreas No Work has unassembled minis. Well, to that I say, I click Skaven, there's a lot of them, alright, leave me be. But also, you should play this game if you've ever had that incredibly specific thought. Or you should play it anyways, because it's honestly pretty fun. Raid has over 600 different champions for use in the game. Each of them is in their own way effective at murdering their fellow living beings and can be equipped with artifacts to make them even more effective. If you want a solid campaign mode, Raid's got you covered. If you want dungeons, then you better believe Raid has you covered. Do you hate your fellow man and just want him to suffer? Well, you should probably get some help with that one, but until then, Raid's PvP arena has you covered once again. The game, while simple to play, has depth behind it, because the fine folks at Plarium know what they're doing. Let me show you some of the fine heroes in this game. First off, Ethos. Now, this guy's a high elf, so that's all the explanation you need, but if that alone hasn't sold you, on him, I'll explain a bit more. He can lower someone's maximum health by 50% of how much damage he deals with one skill. He can guarantee every enemy will be weakened, so we can murder them even better. And for his final trick, he gives up on being subtle and just critical hits every enemy on the field. If you hate whatever's in front of you, be it PvP or PvE, Ethos is your guy. Maybe support is more your thing, no problem. Let me tell you about Ursula. Sure, she can decrease enemy attack and increase her own champion's attack, which is great, but that isn't what you want her for. You want her because she can revive every single dead champion on your team at once, then proceed to buff their defense and strength. Imagine with me, dear listener, for just a moment. You know the Necron reanimation protocol? What if instead of just a few models coming back, all of the ones that were destroyed come back? And they also come back tougher and stronger. That's Ursula. Yeah, you, uh, you're gonna want to use Ursula. And just a reminder that I've only covered two of the over 600 options for champions in the game. Did you know that it's Raid's three-year anniversary this month? There's gonna be some good stuff coming, but in the meantime, they've released skins for champions, so you can customize them even more than you already could. I like this one because I'm easily distracted by shiny things. There's no time like the present is a good saying for a reason, clearly referencing the fact that there's no time like now to get into Raid Shadow Legends. Now keep this secret, but I've managed to secure something for you. If you use my link in the description or scan my QR code, you get a pack that top scientists estimate is worth $40 of in-game content. You get the hero's misery cord, tiger soul, romero, plus 10 magic XP brews, 10 force XP brews, and 10 spirit brews. That's a lot of raid stuff that you can get just by clicking the link or using the QR code. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. The police are hunting me as we speak for giving this to you, so I've gotta go. You've only got 30 days to redeem these rewards and only if you're a new player, so get redeeming and I'll see you there. Now onward, brave viewers, the talons of the Emperor await us. The Adeptus Custodes are what happens when God decides that just because he's all-powerful, doesn't mean he can skimp out in the bodyguard department. When the Emperor was conquering terror to turn the home world into the throne world, he realized he would need some super soldiers to make sure the victory was a guarantee and not just a probability. So he made the Thunderers, and they were great at killing and awful at everything that wasn't killing. But he also made the Adeptus Custodes, and you know what? He nailed it with these guys. Literally zero flaws with the end product. Unfortunately, producing these glorious bananas is expensive, like Jeff Bezos would go bankrupt trying to make one of them expensive. So despite the fact that anything his glowy majesty threw them at was swiftly referred to in the past tense only, the Emperor had to make do with the replacements of the Thunder Warriors, the Space Marines, instead, since there was really only enough resources to maintain 10,000 custodies, more or less. Fast forward through the Horus Heresy, and the custodies go from bodyguarding the Emperor by standing around and looking cool to fighting a never-ending war against demons in the halfway point between reality and hell. Because once again, Magnus did something wrong. A bunch of them died, though probably with a KD ratio that would make a nuclear strike jealous, and then the Emperor bites it and has to get put on the Golden Throne. Gilliman and Rogel Dorn tell the custodies to sit put in the Imperial Palace and guard the Emperor for all eternity, and the custodies smile and nod and then immediately start 
start performing covert ops stuff all around the galaxy because no one but the Emperor can tell them what to do. Fast forward 10,000 years once again, the Emperor still hasn't undied yet, but Gilliman has and he gets rid of his stupid order. Finally, the Adeptus Custodes alongside their allies the Sisters of Silence can officially get back in the game. And more importantly, Games Workshop can put them in the store for you to buy. The Sisters of Silence, meanwhile, were also formed roughly around the time of the Custodes in order to combat any psychic threats the Imperium might encounter. They're all blanks, which means they have no soul, or they have a negative soul, which is different than having no soul somehow. I don't understand it, but whatever, I guess. Either way, when they're around wizards, magic doesn't work, and when they kill a demon, that thing doesn't just get banished back to the warp. That dude is dead. And despite not really having any augmentations, they keep up with the Custodes no problem. Of course, after the heresy ended, they also disappeared for 10,000 years to babysit spaceships full of untrained wizards, before Gilliman once again realized how stupid this was and brought them back into the fray alongside the Custodes. AKA Games Workshop realized those models would probably sell pretty well too. That backstory felt lengthier than usual. But either way, that's what you should know before going into the talents of the Emperor. So why go for these guys? Well, do you want to be the winner? Because the Custodes are going to win all the damn time. Like, half a dozen of them went against 10,000s of Tyranids and won without a single casualty. At one point, they went up against what was basically an infinite amount of demons by themselves and managed to hold the line long enough for the Emperor to shut the door in their faces. These guys are busted. Whenever they get deployed to a battlefield, the Imperium classifies it as a win. Thanks for coming, everyone, but the battle's over and you just don't know it yet. Even if they somehow lose, it's still called a win, so propaganda has your back, baby. The only in-universe enemy that has a chance in a 1v1 against the Custodes is an Eldar Harlequin, which makes sense because they're more or less the Eldar equivalent of the Custodes. Their god just isn't stuck on a couch. Like I said in the intro, they're also the guys for if you want to be the best of the best. The Custodes have a somewhat varied depiction in lore. They have been depicted as being weaker than Space Marines on a few occasions. However, they're usually depicted as being vastly superior, at least in a 1v1, and frequently even as a whole. One Space Marine during the heresy even wondered if they were so effective at killing Space Marines because it was their intended purpose. Everything about them just oozes quality. The Emperor gives them their weapons and armor directly, and may or may not have handcrafted them as well, at least before we stop moving forever. The process to make them is unique to each Custodes and is a massive investment. It's no exaggeration to say that the cost of making a Custodes is measured in planets. You are without a doubt the cream of the Imperium's crop. My favorite quote about them is when the Emperor outright told them he is careful to waste their lives while he'll let others be killed without a second thought. See, he wasn't just a horrible father to the Primarchs, he played favorites with all of his children. And even the Sisters of Silence are incredible by themselves. They keep up with the Custodes despite not having any augments for themselves. Their training is so balls to the wall that they can keep up with demigods just with their workout routine. With the Custodes and Sisters together, you have what's called the Talons of the Emperor. They are outright said in universe to essentially be an invincible fighting machine. The Custodes have no equal in the physical realm. If it exists, they can murder it. The Sisters of Silence job, meanwhile, is to anchor anything magical into the physical realm so the Custodes can kill it. If you want your faction to have a higher purpose, it's hard to beat these guys and girls out in that department. They're supposed to be not only God's bodyguard, not only the best super soldiers the galaxy has ever seen, but the people who are supposed to guide and protect humanity as it matures into a new age. They're a faction of angels. Like, I know that the Space Marines are often called the Emperor's Angels of Death, but that should go to the Custodes, not the Marines. Their tabletop stats are very much reflective of how incredible they're supposed to be. How about we just cut straight to the chase? If you play Custodes, you're winning a fight against pretty much any infantry. Maybe things like Wraith Blades and Cornate Berserkers stand a chance against you in melee, but that's it. Each basic Custodes has a stat block of what would be a character unit in another army. I was comparing the Spirit Seer stats, a Hero Psyker unit, to the basic Custodes model stats, and uh, yeah, sorry my fellow elf lovers, we are not winning that fight. In fact, if you're in a 1v1 situation as a Custodes, just assume you're gonna win. 2 plus armor save, 4 plus invulnerable save is the standard here. You don't get to be God's bodyguards without being qualified. Bravery is also a non-issue. Their leadership is so high that essentially you're never taking morale casualties. Retreating to fight another day is disgraceful. You're gonna die like a warrior and like it. Of course, you might think that they're mostly a melee army and can't really shoot. Nah, you're wrong. Sure, they're best at melee, but they're still solid at shooting. Their basic guns deal two damage. Marines with two wounds might think they're oh so special until the Custodes roll up and obliterate them anyways. I'm sorry, did you think your power armor was worth anything? It's not. It's really not. Maybe you think you can overwhelm the Emperor's Chosens with hordes. Not if they brought a Witchseeker squad, you can't. Take that Dawn of War voice line where the Marine screams, burn in holy fire, and have a woman say it, and you have the Witchseekers as they incinerate entire batches of infantry. Worried about vehicles as a Custodes player? Just throw a Dreadnought at it. They're better than anyone else's. Sorry, Wraith Lord, the Chad Stodes win again. That sentence hurt to type and say, and I want all of you to know that. And of course, they have the Grav Tanks, because in an age where most of humanity gets to use World War One era mechanized units, the Custodes are cruising around in actual sci-fi tech. I feel like it should go without saying, but yes, they're powerful too. They've even got jet bikes for those people who somehow got the mad idea in their head that they could outrun the Emperor's 10,000. Special mention goes to the Rhino. Not for its stats or anything, I just think it's really funny that it's blatantly using an ultramarine paint job. How about the Sisters of Silence? What do they bring to the table? Are you in melee with a Psyker? You get to reroll all your wound rolls. You just do it. They also can't be targeted by or affected by Psyker powers. They look at a man using the power of his mind to throw actual physical lightning around, and they say no. 
I simply will not be affected by this. I fear the day I go up against the Custody Sister Army, because I run Eldar, and I will lose horribly. The models themselves are also absolutely stunning. They're a recent army in the grand scheme of 40k, so it makes sense. The vibrant golden colors of the armor are sure to stand out, and every detail on every model is perfect. There's a reason I said they embody 40k at its finest, maybe even more than the Space Marines. They're Baroque, Romanesque super soldiers with lightning spears and supersized guns, and everything I just described looks amazing. The same goes for the Sisters of Silence. They're just a little bit smaller than the Custody since they're physically just regular people. As for actually collecting them, boy are you in for a treat. They're very easy to paint. Do you have gold paint? Congratulations, that's 90% of your work right there. And because metallic paints are easy to work with, as long as you don't pour it directly onto the miniatures, it'll look good. The rest is some black, red, and gray for the various mechanical bits and cloth highlights, and bam, you're finished. The pricing of these guys isn't as bad as you might immediately think either. You're getting less models for what you spend, this is true. But because you need less models to fill up a custodies army, you won't be spending nearly as much money as a guard, tyranid, or orc player. Save your your wallet and the Imperium at the same time. That being said, even if it's entirely possible to build a solid Custodes army relatively cheaply, you aren't saving as much money as you potentially could be for reasons I'll get into. But of course, it isn't all fine and dandy, even for these guys. What sets them back from being perfect? Well, for the lore, you might be fighting for a grand cause, but you are fighting from the most uneven footing possible. The Custodes aren't just called the 10,000 because it sounds cool, there's only 10,000 Custodes in the galaxy. And while the Sisters of Silence don't technically have that same number cap, blanks are incredibly rare, so there certainly aren't many of them either. The fact that you're a veritable god of war isn't the custodies being OP, it's what they need to make any kind of meaningful progress. Every loss is nearly irreplaceable, so while the orcs can lose a billion boys in a single battle and not care, a casualty report of five custodies is devastating. Despite being the top dogs of the Imperium ability-wise, you still get less focus in the marines than the lore. And yes, every time I cover an Imperium faction, I am going to be bringing this up. The custodies are always depicted winning, sure, but so are the marines and they get the attention more frequently. I still think they're in a solid second place when it comes to how they're treated, but once again, if you play these guys, you aren't getting all the attention. Custodies are also pretty detached from the average person in a multitude of ways. First off, their status as the end-all, be-all super soldiers means there are very few custodies stories in a more toned-down environment. Even if it isn't all massive battles, it's pretty much always something dramatic and galaxy-changing if they're involved, so if you want something low-key, then the custodies are not for you. Secondly, they're fairly detached from humanity. Some of them are disgusted by the weakness of the average human being, while others do go out of their way to try and protect the average person and acknowledge that they're more than anything fighting for mankind and not just the emperor. But at the end of the day, a custodian doesn't have much to talk to your average person about, you know? It's like, sorry to hear you got laid off from your job, random citizen. That's probably awful. Sorry to interrupt, but please excuse me while I go back to preventing literal demons from eating everyone's souls. They're not exactly the kind of people I can picture myself sharing a few drinks at a bar with. To be honest, though, I'm pretty low on lore problems with them. For the most part, they've been handled very well. There's a few nitpicks I could bring up. The custodians haven't been more or less relegated to set dressing for 10,000 years springs to mind. But honestly, I think some of that is more personal preference rather than something I can call an objective flaw. In as much anything I say in these videos is objective. And they even mention how they have to live with the fact they did nothing as the Imperium collapsed all around them, so that sort of thing can even be called an intentional flaw to give them character. But regardless, for once this means I actually have more tabletop negatives than lore negatives. What are they, you might ask? Well, as it turns out, the price of being the ultimate warrior is very literal here. Custodes units cost more points than any army that is in a knight army, which, yeah, of course the mecha are going to be expensive. This means two things. One, you will almost always be outnumbered. Like, a single Custodes model is worth an entire squad of guardsmen. The only army that won't outnumber you is once again a knight army, and to be honest, I'm pretty sure that matchup favors the knights. The custodies are tough, they aren't 50 foot tall robot tough. This means that taking objectives is essentially a lost cause because your opponent's going to have far more models to contest it with than you ever will. You're designed to kill with extreme efficiency, and if you can't be doing that, then you're in real danger of losing. The other downside is that whenever you lose a model, it's gonna hurt. Because you have so few troops on the tabletop, every single loss matters. Where the guard and tyrannids can go through troops like tissue paper, you can't afford to do that. That's why the custodies can really suffer against horde armies. While the Sisters of Silence Witch Seekers can burn through them, if you don't have them, you can be in real trouble as 50 different shots come straight at you. Eventually, one of them is going to get lucky, and when they do, the Custodes are going to feel that loss. Armies with damage reduction can also give you some trouble. The Custodes on average deal two wounds when they hit, which is great. The problem is, if this number is reduced at all, you're going to be dealing not nearly as much damage as you might think you should be. Let's take the Wraith Guard. They now reduce all incoming damage by one. They have three wounds. This means that a Custodian will need to attack a Wraith Guard three times to destroy it. You can very well get stuck in against these units while others tear into you from the sides. You do have a lot of attacks in melee, so it isn't necessarily the biggest problem, but something you should always keep in the back of your mind. Speaking of the Sisters of Silence, to simplify, they're roughly equivalent to Space Marines. It's not a perfect comparison, but from what I've seen, they are closer to them than the Sisters of Battle. Which means that while they're tough, they aren't tough enough to be effective bullet sponges with how much you're paying for them. Improper positioning can be the death of them, and then you're left without your anti-magic button that may very well double as your anti-horde button. Also, while you technically can field an all-sisters army, it's going to be 
very bare bones and not have a lot of what you need to compete. It's good for fluffy battles, don't get me wrong, and that can be a lot of fun, just not if you're trying to win in a competitive setting. You also don't get any magic if you don't ally with an Imperium force. So if you want to run all custodies, you not only can't cast magic, but you can't deny it without using a stratagem either. With the Sisters of Silence being a thing, you might think it's not that big of an issue, until you remember that while the Sisters are immune to Eldrad setting their insides to 500 degrees Celsius, the custodies are not. You're also kind of slow. You have transports, but aside from them and the jet bikes, you aren't the fastest fellas on the field. Not horribly slow, it's not like the Death Guard or the Necrons, but just something to keep in mind before you charge your 10 custodies into a horde of 100 guardsmen. The models themselves are also pretty samey. The Sisters bring some nice diversity into the mix, but even then, they don't really take away from the feel of buff person and golden armor. They also don't have many characters, and the ones they do are buff dude in gold armor, buff dude in gold armor, and buff girl in gold armor. Not exactly a whole lot of variety here. Speaking of, if you can't stand the color gold, just leave. There's nothing for you here. Finally, and most glaring for your wallet, is this. While I didn't mean it when I said you can collect a solid Custodes army for cheaper than other armies, compare the amount of Forge World models available versus the Games Workshop Web Store models available. You'll notice that it's exactly the same. If you want the full-fledged might of the Talons of the Emperor, you're going to be spending some major cash. This isn't just some minor units you'll never care about either, this is things like jump troopers and all your heavy armor. Without managing to find Forge World models on eBay or selling your soul away in exchange for resin, you aren't getting the full army without breaking the bank. Oh yeah, it's Forge World, so resin of course. No one's perfect, I give up. And there we have it, the forces of the Adeptus Custodes and the Sisters of Silence. Nearly invincible in the field of battle, inspiring fear in the hearts of foes and awe in their allies. While you may be outnumbered and outgunned, you'll never, ever be outmatched. If you don't mind having the least amount of models in the field and an obsessive use of the color gold in exchange for the ultimate 1v1 supremacy, then there's no better army for you. Thank you, of course, to my channel members. The continued support is greatly appreciated in my unending battle against the demons of chaos constantly trying to break through my toilet after someone tried to call me using a phone taped to a bomb. That was a really dumb way to reference Magnus screwing up the Webway project, wasn't it? Thank you truly is what I'm trying to get at. Thank you all for watching and take care out there. I'm genuinely surprised to know this, but are you aware that Custodes is actually the correct Latin term for Guardian? Like, Games Workshop didn't pull an Astra Militarum on us, that's actually how you would say it if you were a Roman. Guess even a broken clock is right twice a day, huh?